Welcome back. We're on to our first segment and taking it on to sports. Yes. It's our Sports Wednesday, if you, if you <laughs> must have it. Uh, but we're joined by Kaya Katus talking about her big win over in Cozumel, Mexico at the Cedral Classic 2023. Now, Isani, we were talking uh, during the break about kind of the history with Kaya, and we'll include her in there. Um, but with her father being one to partake in this in this this competition, mm -hmm. and now kind of passing the baton over to Kaya, uh, this is her tenth win. I was told, Kaya, are, am I correct? You're right. You're correct. So, so this is old news by now. You're like you're just gonna go pick up your prize, right? You just gonna make to go and pick up your prize, right? But. We want to say a big congratulations to Kaya. Of course, there was a delegation of Belizeans as well that partook in the race. But the big news coming out is that Kaya won. And we are so happy to have her here on set talking about the experience again this year and what it means to, you know, put in the work and get this kind of result every time. With that said, good morning, Kaya. Hi, good morning, good morning, guys. How's it going? <laughs> so there's a lot we want to talk to you about regarding your career in cycling. And perhaps if we begin, first of all, by talking to us about the experience over the weekend. It's nothing new to you. It's something you've been participating in for quite a while. But is there anything different about this time around versus previous rides in Cozumel that you've participated in? Um, well, like Sabrina said a bit earlier, um, my, my dad started to race in Mexico way before I was born. Mm -hmm. And as a child, um, my brothers and I used to travel with him to these races. Cozumel has been a special one for us because that was one of the first races that had uh, junior participation on the Mexican side. So we started to race there from an earlier age. Me, however, um, I started to race there in 2012. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I started to race there before 2012. But 2012 is, is when I started, uh, was my first win. And um, the, the, the thing about Cozumel, it's an island. So the, the factors that you have to, uh, the elements, the, yeah. the wind, the breeze, the sun, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's hot like Belize, but the wind is like times five. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, so I could, I could only imagine you're, you're pedaling against that strong headwind, feeling as though you're going nowhere, right? <laughs> it's when you, when you come up on the, the seaside, um, uh, a big part of the race uh, is on the seaside, and mm -hmm. it's crazy crosswinds, and um, just letting go of your handle to drink water, it's, it's kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah, wow. So... Talk to us about your career in cycling. I mean, I know you've had a number of accomplishments under your belt over the past few years. Uh, you're also scheduled to ride internationally once again with your team in the United States. Uh, talk to us about the, the path you've traveled to get to where you are. Um, I, I think I've been in the, in the eyes of the media for a while. And um, what I like about it is that in Belize, everyone has been able to see the struggles that we had to go through to mm -hmm. get to where um, I am at today. Um, signing a professional contract was definitely not something that came uh, just overnight. It, yeah. it took a lot of years of, of discipline, dedication, perseverance, and, and trying to get to that point. So um, being at, at where I am today is, I mean, for me, every day waking up, just knowing what I have on the table in front of me, is, it's like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Kaya, could you talk to us about the actual competition itself uh, over at uh, Cozumel? Uh, how long in terms of the length was the race itself? Uh, the race was 46 miles, so uh, it's a bit shorter than the road races that we do here mm -hmm. uh, in Belize. But I, I imagine the wind would make it feel that much longer. <laughs> definitely, the, 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 the wind is definitely the, the added factor. So what about the terrain? Um, it's it's pretty flat. Okay. Um, being a being an island, Cozumel doesn't have uh, any any hills or any mountains. So okay. the, the terrain is is pretty flat. And um, I, imagine having to raise hills in in those types of wind. It would be a double whammy. So <laughs> I know. Um, goodness, they don't. <laughs> yeah. Good practice is probably Kyle, right? <laughs> um, 
But I want to yeah. know, I want to know, Kaya, this is your 10th win. I imagine you were the target when you, when you went over to Cozumel uh, in terms of competition. You were the one to beat because of your history in this race. Could you talk about your competitors? Do you interact with them? What is that like? Um, definitely. Uh, racing in Mexico is, is definitely, um, it's, it's something nice because the, the competitors, I mean, they train just as hard and, you know, they, they want to win as well. But um, in conversations prior and after the race, you know, we, we talk about um, what, what we do outside of, of cycling as well as my, um, my international experience, what they have been doing. And a lot of these girls I have been racing with over there for a while now. Um, some of them we started at uh, the junior category and we're now at elites together and, and we just took different parts in the world of cycling. Mm -hmm. That must be so, there must be such a bond with you and your, and your fellow cyclists as well, the people that you interact with over the years. I mean, you said it yourself that you have been going to Cozumel, Mexico since your dad raced there. So I imagine some of these people that you're competing against, you, you probably have known for years. Yes, and, and even some of the officials and the people just around the, the cycling races, they have known me from before I started to race. So, I mean, they have also seen that, that development over the years. I want to know, uh, Kaya, is, is the sport of cycling embraced in Mexico the way it is here in Belize? It definitely is, and maybe even more so, especially in, in, in a local race like, like they have in uh, Cozumel, because it's so much uh, community-oriented, and okay. the family that organizes the race and runs the race, you know, they, if everybody gets involved, you know, the, all, all the kids, the husband, the wife, all the cousins, wow. if, if everybody is involved in the organization of the race and, and the running of the race. Do you know how many persons participated uh, in the race this year? Um, I don't, I'm not sure of overall, but in the female category, we had 16 competitors. Oh, okay. How does an outing in, like... In the elite category, I believe there was, there was an excess of 70. And they, they had six different categories, actually. Uh, okay. Masters A, B, and C, uh, Novatos, which is the novice category for guys who have only been racing uh, for one year. Okay. And then the women, elite women and elite men. So how does a, an outing like this prepare you for any other upcoming events or tournaments that you will be participating in? I ask because you're riding again very soon in the States. How does the outing in... Cozumel perhaps keep you in shape or, or keep you, you know, properly trained for what's coming? Well, right now for me, I'm trying to get back from injury. And okay. all these races are just um, letting me know how far my, my, my body has recovered and, and how, much work, how much I can push it. And, um, you know, try to build back that, that threshold level and, and see how far I can go. So all these races for me right now are just like a, a gauge to see where I need to be and, and how far I have come since the injury. You're, you're one of few women cyclists in Belize at least who really stood out and have made your mark. Um, but it doesn't seem as if though, and I may be wrong, you'll correct me if I am, it doesn't seem as if though we're seeing more and more young girls, young women and women you know, sort of go through the, the process of becoming athletes at your level, at an elite level? Um, you're perfectly right, Isana. There, there aren't a lot of women or young girls um, who are competitive in the sport of cycling. Um, what I have done in, in the past five or six years is I uh, started a high school cycling series to try to get more young women interested in the sport of cycling so that eventually our women elite category can, can grow to where we have in excess of, of 20 participants. But um, every year we get, you know, we get a good crop and cycling for some reason, it, it's expensive, it you is. know, it's, it's hard work. I mean, it's definitely not a walk in the park, um, waking up early in the morning to train and, and sometimes people just don't stick with it. But apart from that, um, I believe if, if we had other programs or, or other ways that um, can get these girls not only involved, but after they become interested, find a way to hold them, that is what would, would, would make this thing grow.
Yeah. All right. Well, Kaya, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, can we just go over again what's next now? Um, so sometime before the end of the month, I travel back to the U.S. Um, my crypt season starts over there. So uh, between May and September is, is when our season is uh, officially on the go. So, um, yeah, that's what's next for me. Nice. And Good you things. depart to the U.S. very soon as well for your for your competition. Correct. All right. All right. All right, Kaya. So thanks for having joined us this morning. Uh, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And of course, uh, we continue to support you from home, uh, making sure that we have your back. Thanks again, all right? And thank you guys for having me. All right. So we'll take a commercial break. And when we come back... We'll be joined by the representatives of the Belize Police Department to come and talk to us about the Sprite Basketball Cup.